Order. I call the Secretary of State, Sajid Javid, to make a statement. Secretary of State. Yeah. Uh, Mr Speaker, with permission, I'd like to make a statement on the pandemic and the roadmap to freedom. Freedom is in our sights once again. Thanks to the protective wall of this country's vaccination program and the huge advances we've made in getting this virus under control. Yesterday, I stood at this dispatch box and I set out the details of what step four in our roadmap will mean for this nation. After the arduous 18 months that we've all endured, it was so wonderful to describe a world where we can no longer have to count the number of people that we're meeting, where theatres and stadiums are busting with people once again, and where care home residents are able to see their loved ones without restrictions. Now, of course, Mr Speaker, I understand that some people are cautious about their idea of easing restrictions. But we must balance the risks. The risks of a virus that has diminished, but not defeated, against the risks of keeping these restrictions and the health, social and economic hardship that we know they bring. This pandemic is far from over, and we will continue to proceed with caution. But we're increasingly confident that our plan is working and that we can soon begin a new chapter based on the foundations of personal responsibility and common sense rather than the blunt instrument of rules and regulations. Now, today, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to provide an update on another area where we'll be able to ease restrictions the rules on self isolation. Self isolation has played a critical role in helping us to get this virus under control by denying the virus the human contact that it needs to spread. And I'm so grateful to the many, many people right across the UK who have selflessly done their duty making sacrifices so they can help keep the virus at bay. Even though we've done everything in our power to support the people who've had to self-isolate, and yesterday we announced that we'll be extending financial support until September, I'm fully aware of how difficult it has been. But we can take hope from the fact that science has shown us a solution. Just as it's done so many times, in our fight against this virus. And that solution is our vaccine, which we know offers huge protection. The latest data from Public Health England shows that our vaccination programme has saved over 27,000 lives and has prevented over 7 million people from getting COVID-19. And it shows that both doses of COVID-19 vaccine can reduce symptomatic infection by almost 80%. That protective wall, because that's what it is, a protective wall, it means that the odds have shifted in our favour and we can look afresh at many of the measures that we've had to put in place. Now, this is especially important when, we, uh, when almost two-thirds of adults, that's 64%, have had both doses of a vaccine and so have got the maximum protection that the vaccine can offer. As a result, we will soon be able to take a risk-based approach that recognises the huge benefits that the vaccines provide both to people who get the jab and to their loved ones too. So, Mr Speaker, from the 16th of August, when even more people will have the protection of both doses and when modelling suggests the risks from the virus will be even lower, anyone who is a close contact of a positive case will no longer have to self-isolate if they have been fully vaccinated. If someone gets their, dose, their second dose just before or just after the 16th of August, they will need to wait two weeks after which their second jab can take effect and give them these new freedoms. So this will allow the vaccine time to build up the maximum possible protection, those two weeks. Now, as we make this change, we'll be drawing on the huge capacity we've built for testing and sequencing and advising close contacts who are fully vaccinated to take a PCR test as soon as possible so they can get certainty about their condition. And of course, anyone that tests positive will have to self-isolate whether they have had the jab or not. This new approach means that we can manage the virus 
in a way that is proportionate to the pandemic while maintaining the freedoms that are so important to us all. As honourable members will be aware, we are not currently offering vaccines to most people under the age of 18. So we thought carefully about how we can make sure that young people get the life experiences that are so important to their development, while at the same time we are keeping them safe from this deadly virus. So in line with the approach for adults, anyone under the age of 18 who is a close contact of a positive case will no longer have to self-isolate. Instead, they will be given advice about whether they should get tested, dependent on their age, and will need to self-isolate only if they test positive. These measures will also come into force on the 16th of August, ahead of the autumn school term. Now, I know that people will have questions, colleagues in the House will have questions about these changes uh, and other questions around step four on our roadmap and how it impacts schools and colleges. And my right honourable friend, the Education Secretary, will be updating the House immediately after my statement. We are also looking at the self-isolation rules for international travel so that we can remove the need for fully vaccinated arrivals to isolate when they return from an amber list country. And the Transport Secretary will be providing an update to the House later this week. And Mr Speaker, step by step, jab by jab, we are replacing the temporary protection of the restrictions with the long-term protection of the vaccine so we can restore the freedoms which we cherish and the experiences that mean so much to us all. Let's all play our part to protect ourselves and to protect others as we enter these crucial few weeks so that in this battle between the vaccine and the virus, the vaccine will prevail. I commend this statement.